and then you have less muzzle velocity than the OS, but it's very quiet. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I actually like this one. So hello gamers, welcome back to another reviewing video, and in today's video I'm going to be ranking every single suppressor in Phantom Forces. Suppressors are very interesting because usually they kind of suck, they're not that good. But in today's video I'm going to be showing you some of the good ones because there are a couple of decent options. I'll talk about the upsides and downsides of each of them, but yeah, let's get into it. I'll show you the first one on I guess the AK-12. The first suppressor is very interesting because it's a very heavy suppressor and people cannot see you on the radar from more than 20 20 studs away. So if they're within 20 studs, which is very short range, by the way, they can see you on the radar. And it's also very quiet. The problem with this is it actually reduces your muzzle velocity by 20%. In this case, you go from 2,500 studs per second muzzle velocity to 2,000. That is 500 loss. And you lose maximum damage, but not men. Just maximum damage and damage ranges. So you go from, without super armor piercing on, it goes from 70 to 59. So you lose 10 studs. That's actually kind of a lot, man. But yeah, this suppressor, as you can see, it is very, very quiet. The problem is you lose maximum damage and a ton of velocity and your ranges. So personally, I just would never recommend this ever, especially on a gun that does 34. If a gun does 34, you do not want to use this, or I guess even more than that. Basically, if you have 34 damage, you can kill with three shots to the body, but if you use a suppressor, it is four shots to the body. I just would not recommend this suppressor at any time, especially on the intervention or basically any sniper because most snipers actually torso kill only slightly. They usually do like 101 damage. Intervention actually does 99.9 .9 damage. So if you put a suppressor on it, it can no longer kill to the body, which is very bad. The next one up might even be worse than the normal suppressor, depending on how you look at it. It reduces your ranges, but not as much. And it reduces your velocity, but not as much. But here's the problem. It reduces both your maximum and minimum damage. Not by a ton, but by about one point usually. You do 31.35 instead of 33 maximum damage, and your minimum damage goes from 20 to 19. This is a massive change because now this gun takes six shots to the body instead of five at range. So yeah, this is very, very bad. Like, I'd probably use the regular suppressor. It also has a 35 stud uh, radar range, which is not a big deal because first off, nobody cares about their radar, at least usually. Like very few people actually use their radar, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, in most cases, I would recommend never using this, especially on guns like the FAMAS because the FAMAS goes from a 3 to a 5 hit to a 4 to a 6 hit so it loses both a hit to kill CQC and LRC so definitely don't use it on that gun. Next up we have the PBS-1 suppressor. This one's pretty interesting because you only lose 12% velocity which is a little bit more than the R2 but a lot less than the default suppressor but you lose a ton of minimum damage. So you go from starting 20 to 18.4 and it also reduces your ranges by a ton. PBS-1 is also not a good suppressor. I mean let's be real none of them are that good but but this one does have like some jack of all trades type statistics. I might use the R2 over it depending on the gun. If the gun goes from 25 to like 24 minimum damage or 20 to 19 minimum damage, do not use the R2 suppressor. But uh, this is... It doesn't even sound good, dude. Probably use this one over the regular suppressor, depending on the gun. I would use the default suppressor over this suppressor on the AK-12. In this game, damage is very simple. Basically, it's just like you have 100 health. So if a gun does 34 damage, it's going to kill in three shots. Just remember that damage does not round up. So if a gun does 19.8 damage, it's not going to be a five shot. It's still going to be a six. Now, the PBS-4 suppressor is pretty interesting. It's kind of like a medium version of the PBS-1. It reduces both max and minimum damage. has a 30 stud detection radius. It isn't as bad for your damage ranges, but it reduces both max and min damage, and it makes your muzzle velocity a little bit lower. I would probably prefer this one. It still sounds kind of eh. On most guns, it's just going to make it have like the weird, like, I don't even know how to describe it, like a hollow sound. It sounds whack. I don't know why people use like PBS. It doesn't really sound that good. But yeah, we're going to have to move to a different gun for the other suppressors but basically i would just recommend don't use any of these default suppressors they're not good at anything and also sound in this game is not a big deal and there are some other suppressors that are decent but just do not use these default ones the next one i want to talk about is the integral suppressor now the integral suppressor i guess we can talk about it on the honey badger it's probably better to talk about it on that gun integral suppressors are a little bit different because when a gun has an integral suppressor and you take it off nothing changes about the gun for some reason i don't know why it might make sense for it to increase muzzle velocity but maybe increase your recoil or something. I guess that's just not viable for balancing, but so you can put like a compensator on the honey badger and it doesn't even have any downsides. Just long barrel is better and the gun sounds better with long barrel. But yeah, I would use compensator on the honey badger if you want to, but integral suppressors are the best way to go in my opinion. The downsides are already there and on most integrally suppressed guns, they have less downside than a gun that you just put a suppressor on. So make sure to use integral suppressed guns. For example,
example, the MC51 SD, the Honey Badger. Mostly, they're not very good, like the Groza 4 and the Oss are really not that good. Honey Badger is very good, at least. But next up, we have a couple other suppressors that are a little bit different. First off, the Muffler. Now, the Muffler is interesting because it doesn't actually affect muzzle velocity, damage, or ranges. Not only does it sound really great, but I don't think it actually reduces sound as much as other suppressors. And there's two very big downsides. First off, it doesn't hide you on the radar. Now, hiding on the radar is like half of the reason to use a suppressor. But like I said, people don't generally use the radar at all. But here's the very, very big downside that makes it pretty inviolable on most guns. It lowers your recoil, but it lowers your rate of fire. Yes, you shoot slower. It's not a huge difference. It's only 10%, but you can probably tell in the M16A3, it's going to reduce the RPM from 800 to 720. So that's 80 less. So I recommend this on every single gun, not necessarily, but on sniper rifles or anything bolt action or pump action, it is 100% worth it. It has no downsides, only upsides. But if a gun is semi-auto and isn't like lever action, bolt action, or pump action, for example, the KSG-12 works with it, but something like the Saiga-12, it would lower your RPM. So it really just depends on what you want on your gun. I do recommend it on basically any sniper rifle that doesn't have a long barrel because it sounds nice and it's pretty good on this gun even. It does lower your recoil a little bit and your rate of fire so you can shoot for longer. And as you can see, the gun is very, very accurate and doesn't have reduced damage or velocity. So I do recommend muffler over literally any sniper, over literally any suppressor. I would literally use it over any suppressor in every single scenario because the other suppressors are pretty bad. I am fresh out of reserve. Let's try to hit a shot with this. Ooh. Oh, that's one. Oh, our next suppressor is the oil filter and you might think, oh yes, this is very good, right? Well, I would not use this over the muffler in basically any scenario. It is very, very quiet and it has a five stud detection radius, which means you cannot see this thing on radar ever. Not that it really matters though, but here is the big problem. It lowers your RPM by 15%. So now you have 680 RPM on this gun, which is AUG A1 RPM versus an M16A3. And it lowers your velocity by a tiny little bit and it makes your damage ranges worse, which is kind of annoying. I just don't really recommend this one as much. It's okay on like very fast shooting guns, but I wouldn't even recommend it on a sniper rifle because since it loses range and velocity, it's harder to hit shots and it doesn't torso kill as far for a sniper rifle, which is just annoying. I just wouldn't really recommend this. But of course, like, look, my gun is now going from a bullet hose to it can shoot for very, very long without running out of ammo, which is kind of nice. If you're having problems with certain guns, maybe it would be okay on like M231 and stuff, but I would much rather use muffler or just use like a muzzle brake or something. Our next suppressor is not on very many guns, but it's actually pretty good. It's the Osprey suppressor. Now the Osprey suppressor, this thing actually makes your hip fire accuracy better, increases your minimum damage range, and is very, very quiet. It has a 15 stud detection radius. Honestly, this is not too bad. It does reduce your minimum damage, but on a gun like the MP510, which has a five shot at range to a five shot at range, it's not really too bad. This might be the best default suppressor in the entire game, except for like some specialty ones, which I'll get to, because not only is it very, very quiet, it also sounds pretty nice and it makes your ranges and stuff better. Not that that matters though, because here's the thing, you have a slightly better minimum damage range, but the problem is you have less minimum damage. So you're going to have about the same damage at the same ranges, and then you're going to have even lower at farther ranges, which is just, it's like a roundabout way of saying like, you may as well just use the default gun because this gun does 21 minutes instead of 24. Yeah, it has like a 15 stud more max or minimum damage range. I mean, it's not going to make a huge deal, even CQC. So I don't know. Osprey suppressor is not terrible. Just I do not 100% recommend it, especially when you can just run like a copper muzzle brake. Also, I forgot to talk about the ARS. Now, the ARS is probably the worst suppressor in the game for a very specific purpose. It's very funny, though. So it reduces your velocity by 5%, which is pretty good, but it has a massive detection radius of 80 studs. That's like all CQC fights. The nice thing is it has no effect on your ranges, but your minimum damage is very, very very bad. This makes it very funny if you run like hollow points and this attachment on the P90 that has like a nine shot at range. It's very, very funny to use. And it also doesn't really sound that good in my opinion. I mean, it sounds fine, I guess. But yeah, this is actually one of the better suppressors depending on the gun you use it on. Make sure the gun has a ton of max damage and you're not losing any hits to kill because I mean, on the MP510, it's not going to be terrible just not amazing. It's going to five shot, but it's not going to four hit as far. It's going to have worse velocity, worse damage at range, worse recoil because you can't run a compensator. If you could run like a comp and use this, it would be fine. But like the recoil, the MP510 is pretty bad. And yeah, it's like that now. Now we're getting on to some specialty suppressors. Specialty suppressors are what I like to call suppressors that are only on one single gun. One of them would be the psionic suppressor. Now the psionic suppressor is on the MAC-10 and it kind of sucks. It's not amazing. Basically what it does is it reduces your maximum damage range, but increases your min damage range. Range. by a decent amount but the problem is you do 34 to 19 instead of 36 to 19 it doesn't sound like that big of a deal but you don't three hit kill as far and you can no longer two hit head but it doesn't reduce your velocity which is nice and it only has a 10 stud 
detection radius, which makes it a lot better than other suppressors in the game. And it's also very, very, very quiet. Problem is I would probably recommend a compensator over it or like there actually is long barrels that have less downsides and more upsides. So I wouldn't 100% recommend this, but if you do want a very quiet gun, this is one of the better suppressors in the game, definitely. Another suppressor worth mentioning is on the A's Val in the VSS. This is called the suppressor. This has no effect at all, but it actually makes the gun sound like just different. It's kind of nice, honestly. I don't know. I probably prefer the default gun sound effect. It makes it pitched up a little bit higher. And yeah, I just don't really recommend you pre buy this definitely, but if you have the kills, it's not terrible. It's just like a cool cosmetic thing. Another suppressor that's interesting is the DT11 Pro Suppressor. Something you might realize with this gun is that it doesn't really have that many barrels. Most shotguns have like ARS, R2 suppressor, suppressor. You can run a lot of suppressors on those guns. However, on the DT11, there is only the Integral Suppressor, which makes the gun look like that. Um. It looks kind of nice, honestly. I don't know. Here's the problem with this. It lowers your velocity by more than the full choke does, which the full choke reduces it by a ton. You go from 1700 to 1190, and if you use birdshot in this suppressor, you can get some pretty funny results. It doesn't reduce your damage, though, which is nice. It really only reduces your velocity, nothing else. Nice thing, but uh, here's the problem when you use both these attachments. Uh, hold on. Here's the spread from this range. That is not very good. I will not lie to you. I don't think you can even hit marker. Okay, you can. You can hit marker, but uh, can you kill anything? Not really. Very funny with birdshot. I do not recommend this because the meta for this gun is either short barrel or full choke, and you can't run either of them with a suppressor. When the DT11 first came out, people were like, you need to run birdshot. I don't know why, but it just doesn't have the same effect that the Stevens had. I don't know. The Stevens with birdshot was really good. Same with KS23M, but yeah. I mean, you can still kill people. But this is not about the short barrel. This is about the suppressors. Another newer gun that has an integral suppressor is known as the FT300. The FT300 suppressor is kind of interesting, not amazing, but basically all it does is makes your maximum damage range worse and your muzzle velocity lower, which is kind of not amazing, especially with 308. And then you have less muzzle velocity than the OS, but it's very quiet. <laughs> oh my gosh, I actually like this. What? Let's listen to it. That's awesome, dude. I have to talk quiet so you can hear it. That's so cool, dude. Okay, is this good? No. Hold on, let me try it with, like, Marksman Kit, though. Oh, that is so cool. I could almost see this being usable, like, if you're very, very good. Accounting for drop will be very annoying. And you're gonna have a worse torso kill range, so you're probably gonna have to go for heads more. But, if you're really, really good, this might actually be solid. Is there a suppressor on this gun? So this gun can run suppressors? What? Let me hear this. Uh, what? What? Okay, normal suppressor might not even be that bad. Okay. Oh yeah, suppressor is good on this gun, right? I mean, you have terrible velocity, but uh, worse ranges. Worse ranges are better on this gun, though. Oh, that's not bad. Actually, a suppressor is not amazing on the gyro jet, but pretty good. Here's the thing. It does make your muzzle velocity very low at 1,000. Another specialty suppressor is the Vickers. I almost forgot about this one. Basically, all this does is lowers your velocity by 500, which is not terrible. Here's the problem. This gun actually has a lot more recoil than you'd think. Kind of need to run a compensator on it. Problem is, if you're running a Vickers suppressor, you're a little bit too busy running that to actually be able to run a compensator for lower recoil so you basically just have higher recoil and lower velocity with it so it's not amazing but if you do want basically the old as valve then here you have it the old as valve but with a slightly worse three hit kill range and does 19 minimum damage and actually has worse recoil so it's kind of just objectively worse in every single way i'll take what i can get i missed the old as valve i'll take it that's what you guys are saying right now you can use that though it's worth mentioning that you can't take off the suppressor on the k7 but you can put a compensator on it i believe that is it though but yeah if you guys did enjoy this video make sure to like and so pretty interesting i've never done a suppressor review video and i kind of wanted to do that but yeah i will see you guys in the next one peace